Hi everyone, my name is James Feeney. Welcome to or back to my channel. Today I'm going to go over a few books I recommend along with study tips in regards to learning the Thoth and reading with that deck. So this is primarily going to function a bit as a suggested reading list, and I'm going to offer mini reviews on books surrounding reading the Thoth, learning the Thoth system, along with some various offshoots of subject matter that I think is really pertinent to the Thoth system, as well as things related to Crowley. So there is going to be a lot of emphasis on small book reviews, and I hope that that can help anybody out there to maybe cherry pick or streamline their reading process so that you don't necessarily pick up books that aren't well suited for you that you don't like and I can also recommend the ones I think that are the best and of course your taste matters so if I say something that I didn't like in a book and it happens to be something you really enjoy in a book perhaps that's one for you. Likewise I just want to delve into some tips and tricks I wish that I'd known in going into studying the Thoth and looking to learn that system, things that I think are helpful for anybody out there. I think this is great for those who are already studying the Thoth as well. I'd love to share books and tips and tricks with others who are also fans of the Thoth, but this is also geared for beginners, so I'm trying to make it friendly for everybody, no matter where you fall in the spectrum of study in terms of the Thoth. So some things I want to get out of the way before we delve into the books and the tips and tricks one is that the Thoth as a system, in my experience, is one that does require study, more so than I think some other systems or other forms of divination do. It is inherently a cult. There is a lot of things that sort of make up the composite that is the Thoth, a lot of other subject matter, a lot of traditions and spiritual beliefs that are highly technical. And so as far as tarot systems and divination systems go, this one, in my opinion, requires a little bit more reading, a little bit more time spent in a more academic study sense. Other systems, for example, like the Rider-Waite-Smith, I think lends itself a lot better to intuitive study and experience. There's a lot more in terms of the pictorial images, and while there is still a lot of symbolism and occult subject matter present there, it's not as necessary to be sort of knowledgeable on those things in order to read with that deck. Of course, this is this is all my opinion, and that's my opinion on that system. Others might not necessarily agree. I think the Thoth can be a wonderful intuitive deck as well, but in my experience, I think there's a lot more to gain when you do know what you're doing when you're using it, and it can also be a little bit more intimidating to use when you don't know what you're getting yourself into. So that's the first thing. So maybe if you're not so keen on study, if you don't, if you're not sure that you want to read books, then maybe this isn't the system for you. It's, I find, a really great system for those who like the idea of being a student eternally in some sense. So if you're always on the quest for knowledge, if you really are a bit of a bookworm, this is probably one that will suit you well. That's just my opinion on that. Likewise, I think there's the, I guess, elephant in the room, which I don't really consider to be much of an elephant, but I know others do. That is Crowley, Alistair Crowley, and his reputation and everything surrounding him. And I think if you want to study with this deck and you have hangups where that's concerned, leave them at the door or find some way to navigate around them or work with them because you, if you have hangups, I don't think you're going to get very far with this deck. So it's likely that if you do have some major stopping points where he's concerned, you probably aren't even watching this video, but if you do, maybe do a little bit of research for yourself in terms of him and find ways maybe to separate him from the actual deck or the creation and his literature, separating him from his ideas. I think he has some great ideas to offer and a lot of his literature is really insightful. I'm not necessarily a fan of the guy himself, as I think that applies to most things in life. There are plenty of musicians and authors and people that have created things that we use every single day who are horrible people or maybe not the most favorable in some light. We're all complex beings. That being said, I want to get into a lot of the books and I'm going to offer them in terms of maybe how I went about reading them in an order that I think is really helpful. So first and foremost is going to be the Book of Thoth. So this is one that has some a bit of a reputation to it as well for being a bit intimidating and hard to read. 
Then there are those out there who say it's not hard to read at all. I've kind of been on both sides of the fence. I would say it's not, of course, the easiest book to read. Is it written in layman's terms? Is it extremely conversational? No. Is it going to function a lot like a guidebook in that it offers very straightforward meanings for each of the cards? No. It's more like a series of essays and musings. Some of it follows a bit of a stream of consciousness. It does kind of suppose that a reader might have knowledge on certain occult matters that you might not as a beginner. So this is one that you're probably going to want to reread after you've learned a lot, but I think starting here is really important and pushing yourself to get through it, to fully read it, to immerse yourself in it a little bit. I know that it can be a bit slow. There can be points of confusion. Writing down your questions and returning to this later is going to be really helpful, but starting here is my number one recommendation. Don't go for something that seems a bit easier. I think you'll do yourself a disservice if you choose books that are written in more simple terms and avoiding this. So I would recommend starting here. There's a lot in here that is more of just thoughts from Crowley, things that don't necessarily always make sense. There are many books that also try to dissect this book and there are things in here that many just don't understand and that is what it is and I'm not supposing that anybody who reads this for their first time is going to retain all of it or it's not necessarily going to make a ton of sense at first but it is worth the read so starting here and of all the books that I am going to speak to this is probably the most important and the one that I recommend rereading the most. On that note, before we get into other thought, directly related Thoth books that I recommend, I want to recommend some of other Crowley's works. So this is, of course, the Thoth deck is the creation of Aleister Crowley and Lady Frida Harris as the artist. And so Crowley's writings are really important. He put a lot of himself into the deck and used his very vast and sometimes crazy mind to create all of the little intricacies. So reading books that he's also written on other subjects is going to be really important. He also references his other works within the Book of Thoth, and so it might behoove you to then read those works as well. In my opinion, the most important and pertinent to the Thoth in a direct sense is the Book of the Law. It's very thin. It's one that you could probably finish in one sitting. It's also one that might be a little bit confusing upon a first read. It is, again, one of those more essay-like musings. It's somewhat, it feels like a sort of channel text. There's some history that you can look into about how this came into being. It has its own sort of origin story, and then at the end, it does get a little bit more simple in its communication, but it somewhat goes and becomes more of a reflection on society at large. It's very interesting. So this is one that I think is really, really important to read in terms of the Thoth and the Book of Thoth. Likewise, there's the Book of Law by, uh, this is the Book of Law. There's the Book of Lies, which is sort of the counterpart to this, which I think is also important to read. I don't have it on hand, along with one book that I think is great for reference in terms of Crowley, and that's, I'm going to maybe mess up the title, but I know it's 777. So that book, you might recognize what I'm talking about, or maybe just look it up but that's one that's really great for reference material. And then any other Crowley work is going to inform the Book of Thoth and the deck itself very highly. So I, I recommend seeking those out and doing what you can to get the most out of those. So the second book that I recommend potentially reading after the Book of Thoth would be Understanding Aleister Crowley's Thoth Tarot by Lon Milo Duquette. So Lon Milo Duquette has a bunch of books out there that are all really amazing on magic, occult study, among many other things. And Lon Milo Duquette was a pretty attentive and close student of Crowley's. I believe he knew Crowley to some extent. And so this book is a little bit more user friendly. This is one that I know many pick up as opposed to or instead of the Book of Thoth, thinking that this is going to be it for them. And while I do recommend this, of course, like I said, read the Book of Thoth first, and you'll find that as you're reading this, you'll have little moments of connection between this and the Book of Thoth, where things that you didn't understand there, you're starting to make sense of within this. This is a lot more straightforward and conversational. There are very specific sections on each card 
that speak very clearly, that clearly, that speak to the divinatory meanings, that speak to the symbolism within the cards in a very straightforward way that an everyday person can understand without much background knowledge. There's also reference points in here on the subject matter that is involved in the thought and the creation of it, so you get little snippets of subject matter that you're going to want to know more about along with the idea of geometry and all sorts of things that went to the artwork in a very specific way along with some other reference materials and I believe there's a suggested reading list or a bibliography with a lot of helpful suggestions. Yeah, there is a very extensive bibliography in here. So this would be the second one and I think this one's great for quick reference, especially when you're just flipping over cards and wanting to, for example, search them up in a way that's a little bit less confusing. I think that referencing the Book of Thoth is also great because then you're rereading something that maybe was a bit confusing and then getting new insight each time you choose to reference it. So if you're doing daily draws or regular readings with the Thoth, flipping open any of these books and referencing the cards and sections pertaining to them is going to be very, very helpful just because it can be confusing and so drilling the knowledge into your brain is going to be something you want to do right at the start. So after that book, two that I would recommend, I think that this is a great beginner book. Of course, the Book of Thoth is, but this is a great beginner book as well. And so having a really strong foundation with both this and the Book of Thoth is important. Now, if you're moving a bit further in, Book M, Liber Mundi by M. M. Malin is one that I found to be really helpful in the beginning. I would classify this also as a beginner book, so I think maybe reading the Book of Thoth, then Lon Milo Duquette's book, and then Liber, uh, and then Book M, Liber Mundi would be really helpful. I have a few that I consider a little bit more advanced that I'm about to get to, but those first three I find to be really great beginner books. I did have some hang-ups in the beginning, and I've spoken about Lon Milo Duquette's book before, where there were some parts of this that did bother me because he seemed a bit overly self-deprecating or wanting to be relatable or not too woo-woo in his writings and it felt to me like he was almost ashamed of the subject matter that was contained within the thought and trying to almost mm, not delegitimize it but it's tough to describe and I've kind of come full circle and I can understand where Mon Milo Duquette was coming from this. I'm somebody who likes to maybe get into the more fantastical elements, and so hearing somebody maybe speak not as highly of those aspects or trying to make it a little bit more conventional was something that was, I don't know, I wanted to get more immersed. So this wasn't one that I felt super immersed in, and it was one that I had mixed feelings about at the start, but I think it's a great beginner book nonetheless. Just wanted to mention that. Now, this, again, another great beginner book. This book is actually directly corresponding to a deck, or multiple decks, I believe, of M.M. M. Moline's. The, uh, it's the, the deck that it actually speaks to is the Tabula Mundi Tarot, which is a Thoth-based deck, and I b believe it also speaks to her other deck, and I forget the name of that one. But her deck follows the Thoth so closely that this, I think, can be read in terms of just the, the straightforward traditional Thoth, and you'll get a lot out of it. I think her thoughts and reflections are really insightful. You get pictures of uh, the Tabula Mundi when she speaks to each card, but she speaks to it in such a way that it's not overly specific in terms of imagery. So even if you don't have a desire to read with her deck or her version of the thought, I think this is still one that's worth reading. I know you have to get it from her website, so search her up. And I know she also has a podcast that's worth listening to and it speaks to subject matter surrounding the thought and the occult that might be very beneficial for you in your studies if you're a podcast person. I'm not, I prefer books, but I know that a lot of people recommend her podcast as well. And the final book that I would say is a straightforward thought book that is more beginner friendly is The Crowley Tarot, The Handbook to the Cards by Akron and uh, Hajo Banzaf. It's a U.S. game system published book. It looks like this. This one is, I think, a great reference book. I personally read all of it and would use it for reference, but I think this is one you could get away with not actually reading. It gives a lot on each card, 
So it goes more so into the symbolisms and correspondences. So if you're looking to learn all that, which I think is very important, this is great. I don't think this is one that you're going to want to read front to back necessarily in one sitting. I think maybe pulling cards or as you're beginning your readings with the thought, this is one that you might want to look up each card or, or aspects that you're curious about because each card will get a few pages and that's pretty much the majority of the book and it will go into the various symbolisms and subject matters. So this, in my opinion, is one of the better reference books, but not one that I would recommend actually reading front to back, whereas the previous three I would recommend reading front to back for the purposes of study. Now moving a bit more into advanced books or books that come after you feel a bit more comfortable with the Thoth. So these are books you probably wouldn't want to pick up right at the start and start reading. You'd probably be a bit too confused or they'd be lost on you to some extent or you might get frustrated. You just wouldn't get the most out of them. The first one, and it's one of my favorite Thoth books, maybe my second favorite after the actual book of Thoth. This is The Thoth Tarot, Astrology, and Other Selected Writings by Phyllis Seckler. It's a bit of a larger book. This goes into, of course, well, like it says, The Thoth Tarot, uh, the Thoth Tarot Astrology, and Other Selected Writings. So this goes through each of the cards. This is not going to teach you how to read with the cards or necessarily what each of the cards means in a reading. It's more of a sort of exploration of what the Thoth Tarot is as a system and tying it into astrology and going deeper with the astrological connections for the purposes of better understanding each of the cards and their origins and their purpose and how they sort of serve to create this composite or holistic view of the universe of the cosmos. Uh, Phyllis Seckler is, again, another student of Crowley's. She's spoken to him during her time. I believe she may have passed away, so that's very unfortunate, but uh, this book is, is wonderful. It's a little bit more advanced. It goes through and spends a lot of time on each of the majors along with the minors and speaks to them in terms of the deacons of astrology, which are very important with the Thoth Tarot, as you'll see with the small astrological symbols for the planets and the signs that relate to to each of the cards. So this is great. And then at the end, you get a series of letters between Phyllis Seckler and others in the Golden Dawn, maybe not even the Golden Dawn, it's after the Golden Dawn. This would be more OTO, Thelema type things going on, but you get to see letters and there's actually a letter between her and Crowley there's a letter between her and other members. So you get more of this insider scoop on the dynamics of the group that sort of was created by Crowley. And so it adds a lot of depth and I just found that to be really interesting. So this was one that I highly recommend. Definitely not a beginner book, but one that I think if you are at all interested in the thought that you should read at some point. It opened my eyes and made me think of the cards a lot differently. So this was really where I started to feel like I was getting a lot of depth, and when I read this and felt like I could understand it, I felt very competent in my thought studies after having read this, so yeah, a great one to read for sure. Another set of books, and I just finished reading all of these, let me put them in proper order. That's two, that's one. These are a series of three volumes, so the first is Secrets of the Thoth Tarot, Volume 1, A Magical Atlas of the Universe, The Lima, Aeons, and the Major Arcana by Marcus Katz. These are all by Marcus Katz. There's the first volume, the second volume, and the third. The first focuses primarily on the majors, and it also goes into subject matter that led up to the making of the Thoth. This is not one that's going to teach you how to read with the cards. It's not going to teach you divinatory meanings. I mean, it, it gives you the tiniest bit on all of those things, but it's more so an academic piece. It's more of this critical literature, comparative literature that brings in a lot of subject matter. So a lot of things are referenced in here. This is definitely, it feels more like you would find this in a college library or something like that. So it can get a bit dry at times. And I think the amount of things referenced can almost be a bit frustrating because you're wishing that those things were just spoken to in this book and you don't want a book that tells you to read a million other books while only telling you a limited amount inside of itself. But I do think there's a lot to gain here. I learned a lot about the various subject matter that went into the, uh, the thought. I learned a lot more about Crowley in here. I think there's a lot written on and studied in terms of Crowley. So 
that I found to be really beneficial through all of these. The first volume covers the majors along with some major subject matter that went to the deck right at the, the offset, so that's the beginning portion. And then at the end there are some methods for reading the cards or more traditional ways of reading the cards. The second volume, which is called Bricks of a Living Temple, the Minor Arcana, Geomancy, and the I Ching. So this one goes through the minors in terms of being ace to ten, so it goes through all of those through each card specifically, and then it also speaks to, of course, the it speaks to Geomancy and the I Ching, which are systems that are important and apply very heavily to the Thoth. And I think actually, yeah, I liked the second and third volumes the most. The first one was a little bit of a drag in my opinion. These three books in general, I don't think are imperative for any Thoth student. I think they're very extra for somebody who really cares to put in the study, but if you're looking to actually just read with the deck and use it in a way where you feel competent and okay uh, using it in readings, these are not necessary. And so they're just for somebody who has a curiosity to learn more about anything that went into it. So the second one covered the minors, and the third covers the court cards, and this one is called The Sanctuary of Transcendental Art, Court Cards, and the Reading Methods for the Thoth Tarot. So there are more reading methods contained within this one as well, and I think I learned maybe the most about Crowley as a person through these and his life. So these kind of did serve a little bit as an unintentional biography on both him and Harris. There are also bits of letters they wrote to each other contained within this, and a lot of reference to the Book of Thoth along with Crowley's other writings being quoted in ways that are helpful. So there were things that I didn't pick up in the Book of Thoth or that I didn't pick up in the deck that Marcus Katz caught that he references in this book, and I was like, oh, I wouldn't have thought to turn to the Book of Law and break down all these passages in terms of the majors, but Marcus Katz thought of that. So these were really helpful. I don't think these are necessary for any Thoth reader out there, so this is not necessarily one I would recommend, but it's a really nice extra that I wound up enjoying, so that's that on that. Now, that covers all of the books that I'm going to show that are directly related to the Thoth, that speak directly to the subject matter of the deck itself. The following books are going to be about subject matter that's contained in the Thoth, so things like astrology, the Kabbalah, geomancy, things like that. So I'm going to speak to books that I recommend for getting a baseline understanding of those subjects so that you might be able to use them in terms of the Thoth and be able to better understand the cards as you're working with them. So the first and maybe the biggest would be astrology. It's very heavily embedded in the deck in every single card. So I have a few books that I would maybe recommend for anybody just looking to know enough to be able to understand those parts of the Thoth Tarot. So a really great beginner book that I recommend and one that's really just light and easy and nothing too serious is Astrology for the Light Side of the Brain by Kim Rogers Gallagher. This one was actually recommended to me by Kasha from Tarot Map. This wasn't my first astrology book, but I think it's a great first book for others. It's a great beginner book. It's one that's going to give you the baseline on reading a birth chart on the houses, on the planets, on the signs, and their sort of connection to each other and how that all works. So this is one for just quick a quick read, and it's going to give you just enough. Would I recommend this as like the only book to read on astrology or a reference book? No. However, the one I would recommend the most for term in terms of reference material would be Astrology, A Cosmic Science by Isabel M. Hickey, the classical work on spiritual astrology with a foreword by Stephen Arroyo. Stephen Arroyo writes a bunch of books on astrology as well. This one is extremely comprehensive. I'm constantly using it and referring back to it. I guess I was going through Taurus and all the houses apparently as where my bookmark is, but this is one that I think is the best for reference. It has everything in it in a super comprehensive way, and there's a lot, a lot of detail in here, and it's easy to find exactly what you're looking for. I would recommend reading this actually front to back if you have the time and feel so inclined, but even if you don't, I think having this on hand to be able to use when you have questions, this is probably my favorite reference book for astrology. Now, 
The elements are really important in tarot, no matter the system. I think that's something that is pretty straightforward. But if you're looking to understand astrology in terms of the elements a little bit better, one of my favorite astrology books is Astrology, Psychology, and the Four Elements, an energy approach to astrology its and its use in the counseling arts by Stephen Arroyo. So another Stephen Arroyo book. This one's on the smaller side. I wouldn't consider it a quick read, although it's short, it packs a punch and it's a little bit dense. It goes more so, it's not necessarily here to teach you astrology, although it does a bit of that. It's more so taking the basics of astrology and relating it back to the idea of very fluid energies of the elements and how those pertain to our makeup as human beings. So that way you can relate astrology and what it means to you in a very practical way, but in a way that also feels really holistic. So this is one I do recommend reading, and I think it helped me to kind of form a better connection between the suits and baseline elements and astrology within the Thoth Tarot, and then how I could incorporate that into my life through the readings. So highly recommend this one. Now, the only other two I have to mention are on the Kabbalah and Geomancy. I don't have a book here that I want to reference, that I want to share in terms of the I Ching, and that's mostly because I haven't found one that I absolutely love yet. I'm not really big into the I Ching. I've read a bit on it. I would say I'm very much at the baseline standard beginner level of the I Ching, just enough to be able to reference it in the deck, so I wouldn't want to speak to it as much. But Crowley really did love the I Ching, and based on what I've read, he seemed to actually use and like the I Ching more so than tarot, so that was really interesting. He used that a lot more for himself in readings instead of using tarot, and he favored that system over pretty much all the other systems. So I Ching is important. I'm not going to share a book on that, but I do recommend seeking one out just to have a baseline understanding. The Book of Thoth, in the Book of Thoth, Crowley speaks to the I Ching in terms of the cards a lot, so understanding the basics of that is going to be very helpful. So the Kabbalah, of course, is one that's referenced quite a bit, and a really nice beginner one that I've talked about before that I recommend for somebody who's never dipped their toes into the Kabbalah before is Kabbalah Made Easy, Discover Powerful Tools to Explore Practical Magic and the Tree of Life by David Wells. This one is super conversational. It's a quick read. There are exercises that I think are very practical and easy so that you might get a real world understanding of what the Kabbalah looks like in daily life and sort of transposing it onto things you can make sense of that aren't so abstract. Also, the Thoth Tarot is referenced in here. David Wells uses the Thoth Tarot and will speak to the cards in terms of the Kabbalah and the Kabbalah as a system with the Tree of Life and looking to maybe the cosmos in a very interesting way. I think the Kabbalah is one of the very important systems that is sort of prevalent within the Thoth Tarot. This is a great beginner book. I think there are plenty of other great Kabbalah books out there, some of which I've read, but some of them are a bit highbrow and intimidating and I would say overly complex in a way that they don't need to be. And I think that sort of makes them a little bit less accessible to anybody who wants to learn. So for anybody who's looking to just get your foot in there and maybe you don't care to know as much, but you want to know just enough to be able to recognize it in a way that you can make sense of in the Thoth, the Kabbalah, this one, the Kabbalah made easy. And then finally, some geomancy is referenced in the Book of Thoth and the Thoth deck itself. Geomancy is another system that can get a little bit, I, in my opinion, needlessly complex and confusing. Of course, these are all very complex systems. I just mean the way that they're written about in some texts can be a little bit confusing. And so I'm trying to pick books that break it down for somebody out there so that it isn't as flustering to try to, to delve in. And my favorite book right now for geomancy is The Art and Practice of Geomancy, Divination, Magic, and Earth Wisdom of the Renaissance by John Michael Greer. This one's really enjoyable. I love the writing style of John Michael Greer. It reads very much like a conversation. There's a lot of storytelling in here, so it doesn't read as much like an academic text. It's not like it's trying to spit dry information at you. It really does, John Michael Greer does make an effort to weave a sort of story and mythos into the idea of what geomancy is. So it makes this a really enjoyable read. 
I think a lot of these are actually very enjoyable reads. Some of them are a little bit drier than others, but all of what I've basically mentioned here are books that I think a lot of people would enjoy when learning the Thoth. I think reading as much as you can is very important in learning the system. I think practice is key as well. I think looking at the Thoth as a deck that is used for more than just divination is very key and something that's important in learning the deck and studying it. Crowley really didn't look to, well, he never quite used his deck. It was published after he died, but using the tarot, Crowley, and I know many others, thought of it more as this sacred text or something that could be used to depict any and everything that might be experienced or may have taken place in the vast cosmos. And so using it for divination was something that wasn't necessarily at the forefront of their minds. So looking to the Thoth and understanding it as a sacred text, as something that can be applied in more ways than just divination is key. Using the cards to say, look at your daily life and take your daily life and sort of create this sort of interwoven way of interacting with the deck where you can look to the court cards and identify people and places that you know, looking to the major arcana and being able to identify events that actually take actually take place in the world, looking to books that you read on spiritual matters and even just fiction novels and finding ways that the cards might apply. I think that's really beneficial. I think looking to the cards as a tool of magic, which Crowley very much did, is something that you might want to investigate whether you are a magical practitioner or not. Using them as sort of talismans or keys and use in manifestation and understanding their power as pictures, understanding their power as sigils and ideas that can be abstracted in many ways and how each card is not necessarily just one thing but a way of looking and being that can be anything. I know that sounds very confusing and I'm not sure I'm making too much sense, but the big takeaway here is that in the study of the tarot, looking to it and trying to study it outside of just readings and using it for purposes of divination is key, is really helpful, and I think it'll add a lot of layer and nuance. I also think it will expand your tarot practice in that there's more to tarot than flipping over cards to make choices or understand situations. Tarot is something that we can use to interact with the world around us in a really, in a way that engenders awareness, in a way that engenders critical thinking, that gets us more in tune and in touch with being in the present moment. All of those things I think are really important and I think that a lot of those feelings were really imbued in the Thoth Tarot, so it would it would make a lot of sense to maybe study it in the way that it was intended, and then to also go off on your own and study it in the way that you intend to use it. So there's no right or wrong way to study the, the Thoth Tarot. Those are just the books that I've read, and I hope that maybe some of those can, can serve as recommendations or an order that you might want to go in if you're looking to read. And then if you are looking to study, I hope some of these tips were helpful as well as far as subject matter and all of that. I hope you are all well. Like and subscribe if this was fun or interesting. And until next time, bye.